journey the guy will take and what comes next for Bubble. Here is Markus Witte, CEO and founder of Bubble. Hi. Great Thank to have you here, Markus. The stage Good afternoon. Hi. So, uh, series starts here. Um, before I dive into our story, who of you is doing business in the US? Just hands up. That's very few. Any of you is planning to start a business in the US? Come on, hands up. Very few. So, I guess my job here today is either to convince most of you that your business might work in the US or to inspire you to do other things from what we've learned. Um, what I'm sharing today is, is uh, our, our journey there and how we made it kind of work. So today, Babel is the top grossing language learning app in the world. Um, millions of paying subscribers, 700 people, uh, mainly in Berlin, some of them in New York, the latter I come to in a minute. Let's go back to 2014. That was when Babel was around seven years old, and Europe was really working for us. We felt we cracked it, and uh, the business model was working, um, and we thought the US should be our next big market. We had some early sales there, so it seemed that must be working, but we felt we can't do it out, out of Germany. So all the other countries were running out of Berlin, but for the US market, we felt we need a presence on the ground. And we decided to go to New York, of all places. Why is that? Might be obvious, there's direct flight from Berlin even to New York. Um, it's only six hours time difference, uh, we didn't need the em embedding in the Silicon Valley community, so New York seemed the place to go for us. And um, the question was, who goes there? So we, we thought about different approaches, did some scouting, and then I came to the very strong opinion that we need a founder on the ground. And there was two of us who could go, Thomas and I. Thomas an engineer, me a marketeer, uh, I was uh, the, uh, the CEO at the, at the point in time, Thomas was the CTO. So who of us would be going? And um, fortunately, I managed, I managed that Thomas went because I thought um, we, we need to run operations here. And uh, there's so many things engineers can do, right? And after all the success in Europe, how hard can it be with an engineer there who's not really an American, and not really a marketeer, but again, uh, he's founder he, and, and he'll manage. And um, back home, everybody was excited. So this must work, of course. Bringing language learning to the US, it's, um, it felt like the natural thing, and we were big here, they would immediately recognize us there. Uh, the press here reacted very positive to that, uh, so we really felt we we're on to something. And again, how hard can it be once you made it in, in Europe? Well, uh, the US was a bit different than we thought, a bit more different than we thought. And um, we were kind of lost because ultimately, for whatever reason, nobody had been waiting for us over there. And nobody cared that we were big in wherever in the world that we came from. Was that Kazakhstan, you said? No, Germany? Yeah, maybe. Um, so that didn't pick up. And the things that we learned over here, our marketing claims, our wisdom, how we approach the market, how we sell our product, did not work. Because um, we felt that we have a superior product, and uh, there were competition products in the US, but, uh, but they always ha struggled to go into the European market because their methodology was ancient and they were not really effective. So we thought we will just blow them away and the product will tell its own story and so on and so forth. Um, so basically the way very many founders think. And uh, that didn't work. And not only that, people didn't want to work for us. 
um, we didn't have like these well-known uh, investors on our cap table. There was no Sequoia or whatever uh, funding us. Um, and we were basically a known name in a small co-working space in the lower, lower East Side. So good people weren't interested. And we found the US different in so many ways, so many unexpected ways. Um, it's the way you do business, the way you hire people, the way you communicate. Everything was different. And that was not really, not really a situation we, <laughs> we felt comfortable in, uh, especially because it was unclear. Where do you start? In that situation, thrown into that strange and partly hostile environment, um, where would you start? Well, it was with the positioning. It was with the question, what do we stand for? How do we tell our story? And to do that, we brought one of these ag agencies on board that I personally never believed make any sense. I thought, like, a lot of money spent on expensive specialists that won't move the needle. Um, but they got us to do the, the obvious thing, looking back, the obvious thing, that is to talk to our customers. So we set up co-creation cool sessions uh, in different areas of the country because, of course, Los Angeles is a bit different to New York and so on. So we got to talk to our users and, and we understood how, to, how we need to tell the story over there because they very often had frustrating experiences in language learning in the past. They had encountered products in the area and since we haven't heard uh, the Netflix name before, <coughs> they in, to stay in that, m that metaphor, they had been um, to a video store. <laughs> they have, had been to a blockbuster, and they were not happy, and they thought this is just the, another, another of those. So we had to find a way to, just in one, one or two words, bring across that we were different, that we were not just an app where you learn grammar for two years and then learn vocab for a, a couple of time, and then you can say, I would like another beer. Um, so how do you do that? Uh, we found it was all about conversations. Because conversations is what people really wanted to have. Real life conversations fast. That was basically the positioning. As easy as that. And me personally, when the agency came back to us with that claim, <laughs> I thought like, yeah, so we spent all that money for that? Really, you serious? And um, still, we rolled it out, of course, the money was spent, so let's give it a try. And to my and many of our team's surprise, this piece of positioning actually made a difference. Suddenly, we, fell, we felt that there's an inflection point and sales were picking up. So something slowly but surely st uh, started working, and that was almost two years down the road. It was when Thomas and his family, with now an American son, um, needed to go back. And uh, that was the moment where we made what you could call a key hire. Because we had to, ta uh, had to find somebody to take over from Thomas. And again, we worked with one of these agencies that I always failed to believe in, a headhunter. Um, why would you need those? Um, well, if you're no name in a foreign market, um, you need them. You need their network. And we felt we not need, don't need a um, country manager. We don't need a general manager, US or whatever. We don't want somebody to report into headquarters. We felt we need a CEO with their own board, with a proper budget, and a more or less independent governance from headquarters. So we set out to find that person, and uh, we, we found Judy Hansen, who had been the COO of Business Insider for quite a time, and in the minute we met her, we felt she's the right person to take this from good to great. And she was. From that inflection point where sales started to come in, where we were still in a small co-working space in the Lower East Side. I'm not, I'm not talking shiny WeWork. 
um, not as nice. Um, she, she took us, or she took the team to, through a tremendous journey and uh, to what we could call success. We already hear, heard one million subscriptions last year, paid last year. That's quite a big number, especially for the US, especially for a country where people are not thinking they want to learn languages so much. So uh, that was a huge milestone. And uh, we're now at, in the mid-30s in brand awareness. We started with zero. Today, people actually know us. If you talk about Babel in the US, people recognize it. So it's a completely new experience. We now have people who want to work for, it, for us. We have very, very senior people actually actively applying, would you have a job for me? Never heard of. We thought that would be impossible in the US. Now that's kicking in. Uh, we are still growing in the, in the three-digit numbers. And the US in new sales is now our number one biggest market. So this combination of having a founder there who can transplant the spirit, the culture, the way of doing things, the self-explanatory things, over there, set up a team, and then finding a high-powered local CEO was what worked for us. We learned the lesson that actually these weird consultancies that help you go to market, that help you in positioning, do make sense. These headhunters can help if you're unknown and nobody wants to work for you. So that whole journey which is not by far ended because I think we laid some foundations there, but there's a lot of, lot of battles to be fought and it is not the end of it. The positioning that we have took us from there to where we are. For the next leg of the journey, we might need something different. Um, this is still early days uh, because a million uh, subscription in the US is a drop in the ocean. Uh, I'm pretty proud that Americans are learning languages and that we are part of that. But this is just a starting point, and uh, there's a lot of battles to, to be fought, and we're still in the learning mode. But the things that we've, we've learned, we lear we've absolutely learned the hard way, um, and we got beaten up pretty badly. But if you are thinking that your product will sell itself in the U.S., think it's think again. If you think that you're watching the same TV series, listen to the same music, and kind of know the language, so how hard can it be? Let me remind you, it is extremely hard to go there. It's extremely hard to succeed, but there's a big price over there. It's still, in most consumer markets, the biggest, single biggest domestic market in the world, and it's absolutely worth fighting for. And for some weird reasons, Europeans have advantages in that market, which doesn't feel obvious in the first place when you go there. Um, it's something that you work out over time. So, thank you for listening. I hope that you got inspired. Bring your business to the US or somewhere else. Um, I'm not sure, disclaimer, this might not work in China. This might not work in India. Um, but there might be something for you in there, I hope, in sharing that piece of experience. Thank you. Thank you. Go Vest, all the best. Thank you. Bye-bye, <laughs> Michael.